In the hot seat on Capitol Hill, it's been a busy week for President Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen. This week, he testified behind closed doors before the U.S. House Committee. And on Wednesday, he gave explosive public testimony about his former boss. Cohen implicated that the president, on numerous fronts, from hush money payments during the campaign to financial shenanigans at the Trump Organization, to claims that the president orchestrated lies while in the Oval Office. You need to know that Mr. Trump's personal lawyers reviewed and edited my statement to Congress about the timing of the Moscow Tower negotiations before I gave it. So to be clear, Mr. Trump knew of and directed the Trump Moscow negotiations throughout the campaign and lied about it. The questions have been raised about whether I know of direct evidence that Mr. Trump or his campaign colluded with Russia. I do not. And I want to be clear, but I have my suspicions. He lied a lot, but it was very interesting because he didn't lie about one thing. He said, no collusion with the Russian hoax. And I said, I wonder why he didn't just lie about that, too, like he did about everything else. Here to weigh in on the latest former federal prosecutor who is now a prominent criminal defense attorney, Curtis Falgatter. Thank you so much for coming on. So uh, Cohen testified about several dealings with President Trump and one of them involved hush money for porn stars. So what's the relevance of that testimony and what crimes, if any, are possibly committed with that? Yeah, that's probably the key area of his testimony. And uh, his testimony was that uh, President Trump directed him to pay hush money to Stormy Daniels during the election so that she would not reveal to the public that Trump had had uh, paid her for sex uh, in the past and of course that could have harmed his election and the, uh, the total amount was $135,000. So the campaign laws are violated if a corporation and uh, Cohen set up a sham corporation. If a corporation pays $25,000 or more that's a felony and of course so it's a felony because it's $135,000. Uh, that's a crime. Well, that's important, but really beyond all that, of course, the, the Congress is looking at it because that's a, an example of corrupting an election process. What, what's the most fundamental thing to our democracy? Elections. So uh, that, was, uh, that was a corruption of the election process. And, you know, we just had a race for the governor here. And, uh, you know, the Democratic uh, candidate was reported to have received uh, some uh, tickets to a Broadway show. And most of the political experts say that that's why he lost the campaign. You know, one would think that if the public, uh, the, the national voting public, was aware of the president-elect uh, paying a bribe money to uh, hush a porn star up, that could have swayed the election. He already lost the popular vote. So, you know, it could have had a dramatic uh, effect on the outcome of the election. So Cohen admitted that he lied to Congress. Does that affect the president? Well, it does because it's in the two key areas that the president has repeatedly denied any knowledge of. The one we just talked about was the hush money. Yeah. To Stormy Daniels, and of course, there's also the Karen McDougal, and National Choir paid her another 150,000. So, but Cohen was directed, according to him, to lie about paying the hush money in terms of whether the president knew it. The president, you know, repeatedly denied it. That Air Force One uh, footage of him denied, didn't know anything about it. But he directed Cohen, according to Cohen, to pay it. Made 11 payments, one of which was a personal check from the president for 35,000, while the, the Mr. Trump was the president. So, and of course, the second thing was the a business interests over in Russia and and Cohen was directed and, and apparently his statement was proofed by, uh, by President Trump's lawyers to disavow any business dealings in Russia when indeed they were actively pursuing the Trump Tower which according to the experts would have yielded hundreds of millions of dollars in funds for Mr. Trump but he wanted to distance himself from that so those are the two key lies that, uh, that Cohen made and of course really there was no reason for Mr. Cohen to lie about it but for helping his president, who he, of course, said he would take a bullet for and really did. Yeah, it sounds like it. So Cohen said uh, that he, that President Trump knew about the emails, Hillary Clinton's emails, that they were going to be released. Does that have any implications on the president either, or is that kind of it, a separate? It's, it's a little bit separate, but of course it also goes to the heart of the election process. And, and uh, so Cohen reported that he was in, in Trump's office when Roger Stone called in and reported that the, uh, the uh, owner of WikiLeaks had obtained the, uh, the Clinton emails through a hack. And of course, all of our intelligence experts tell us that hack was c performed by Russian operatives under the direction of President Putin. And ironically, or not so ironically, uh, on the campaign trail, then Mr. Trump was, was encouraging Russia to hack the, uh, 
Democratic National uh, Committee's emails, which he knew they'd already done. So he took advantage of that in the campaign. Again, most folks would say, well, that, that's a way to corrupt the campaign. You're having a foreign enemy, basically, uh, meddle with a campaign, and then you take advantage of it. Very interesting. We appreciate you coming on this morning. A lot going on here, obviously. We have a whole section, of course, online, newsforjacks.com, our politics section, if you need to catch up with everything in the latest. But Cohen is set to finish his testimony on Capitol Hill next Wednesday. If you want to read more, as I said, and you can read that testimony, you'll find this story on the homepage of newsforjacks.com. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure.